Hey everyone and welcome. In this video we look at an article stating Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, has lost control of the talks and member states tell him so. <laughs> and I do believe that we have rotten, rotten politics and I'm, I'm not using that as an exaggeration. It's titled, Barnier loses control, angry EU states intervene and it could sink Brexit trade deal. British negotiators fear Ma Michel Barnier has lost control of post-Brexit fishing talks to hardline EU states hell-bent on keeping control of Britain's fishing waters. Now as you can tell, all is not rosy for the EU right now, but I'm thrilled to bits <laughs> as it effectively secures our no-deal Brexit unless Boris folds, which is great for us, crap for him owners. <laughs> Let's read. The EU's chief negotiator with, all, with the European Union has warned the Prime Minister that Brussels bureaucrat was blocked from watering down the bloc's demands for unchanged access to the fishing grounds. David Frost advised Boris Johnson that Mr Barnier is keen to climb down from the EU's unrealistic position and, and progress was being made towards a compromise. But the talks hit the wall after the Frenchman was ordered not to buckle by angry fisheries ministers, killing any chance of a breakthrough. Which is brilliant, is it not, everyone? Mr Frost had hoped to launch details negotiations of future fishing quotas during last week's fourth round of trade talks. Mr Barnier was stopped from discussing potential numbers and percentages for catches by European capitals fearful of a capitulation. The Brussels negotiator was unable to go into detail because of opposition from the bloc's fishing countries led by France. British sources said the interference had skewed things late in the process and meant talks remained deadlocked. Woohoo! That's good for us, is it not? Negotiators have been left frustrated by the, their EU counterparts who they say have not been allowed to go beyond discussions on the effects on coastal communities and historic rights. The UK has tabled a precise blueprint for the use of science to determine post-Brexit access for European vessels. As a UK source said, until they give us some more, there is no way of using that to derive hard information about the numbers. That appears to be the difficulty. If they could do it, we would happily talk to them about it and see what could be done. So that they, they're trying to be as slimy as possible, aren't they? So that we can come to an arrangement that's good for us. Well, that, that just forces us in, into the corner of no deal, does it not? France fears its fishermen have the most to lose, yes they do, when their access to Britain's, Britain's waters changes after the transition period expires at the end of the year. And I will say this as well, France. When that happens, you better not put your tri ships in our waters again. How dare you? We remember the Scallop Wars. Yes, time for yours. Mr Frost has instructed his task force, Europe, to reward British trawlermen with much larger catch quotas for fish that live in UK waters. Downing Street insists the UK will become an independent coastal state. You're listening, EU, and the government must be able to set the rules on foreign fishing boats accessing its territorial waters. You buy our fish. You don't fish them. Last week, Mr Barnier accused British negotiators of backtracking on a commitment to secure a fishing deal by the end of the month. Not so. That commitment was made by Theresa May. Our Prime Ministers are not held by the previous Prime Minister's actions. Sorry, Mr Barnier, that's not how it works. But the Frenchman conceded publicly for the first time that the EU will have to drop its demand for a status quo fisheries agreement. Starting to worry about um, the other stuff, aren't they? The close alignment. They start to worry a lot about the competitiveness of us. He said, on fisheries, we have we have very strong positions on both sides. Yep, ours is, you're not having them, yours is, please let us have them. The EU wants the status quo, the UK wants to change everything, and that is exactly what we voted for. If we want an agreement, we have to discuss somewhere between those two issues. No, we don't. No, we don't. We don't have to compromise on the fisheries at all. You're not getting them. We're prepared to discuss what needs to be discussed. No, it's no discussion. How about you prepare to be told. <laughs> Brussels source said the two sides remain far apart on fisheries after the last round of trade talks. Now, it is actually around about 50 to 60 million per year that they would actually lose without the fisheries. 50 to 60 million. So you can understand why they are desperate to keep it considering their finances are through the floor at the minute and they don't look like to be get, getting any further as well. What with them still arguing over the budget shortfall of 400 billion for a seven year period you see where I'm coming with this bye bye you bye bye you <laughs> 
The EU negotiators claim they have a possible solution that could break the deadlock when negotiations resume early next month, but they are unable to make their plans public because of fear of another backlash from EU capitals. A senior EU official said, What is clear is that we have two positions that are far apart. We are trying to see how we can take this forward. Now, what's my opinion on this? This is just more evidence that the EU are desperate. They're talking about relaxing the, the, the non-relaxable deal that they must do no matter what. So it just shows you that they, they, it's not about we can't do this, we can't do that. They don't want to. They want to, com to remain in complete control over us and the closer it gets to the deadline, the more they're realising it's not going to happen. <laughs> Oh, they're going to get more and more desperate as the days goes go on, guys. But I really do feel hopeful about this one. I actually think this is going to force them to no deal because they're never going to compromise, are they, really? All the articles we've read recently about the EU are showing that they're never going to compromise. And if they do, it won't be, it won't be in our favour. So at this point, we all that voted leave want to vote, go on a no deal. We all want to go and give them the two-finger salute and move on to greener pastures. But let me know what you think, everybody. Everyone, do you think this is more desperation? Because <laughs> I think it is. I think it's blooming brilliant. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon. I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe, everyone.